In this 13 cube short, we're going to take a look at a forensics tool that can help us parse and track USB device artifacts on, wait for it, a Linux system. Yep, that's right. While there have been plenty of episodes covering Linux tools used to parse Windows forensic artifacts, this is the first time we've looked at a Linux tool for parsing Linux artifacts. This, alongside Mac OS content, have been among the most frequently requested topics on this channel. So hopefully this is the first of many such episodes. As you can see, you're looking at the GitHub page for a project called USB RIP. A common use of this tool would be to prove that a USB device was connected to a specific Linux box by a specific user and within a specific time frame. This is often useful during IP theft cases and other cases in which USB devices are involved. Now I'm not going to cover installation of the tool or the associated configuration of syslog because this is very well documented here and it's quite easy to do, but in a nutshell, you'll need Python 3.6 or later and you'll need to edit rsyslog.conf to make one minor modification. Basically, you're going to tell syslog to not use the traditional log format and to instead use a format that will ensure high precision timestamps are in use because that is required by USB RIP. Once you've met these simple requirements, the tool can be easily installed with PIP, which of course is the de facto standard package management system used by Python. So in the next section, let's jump over to an Ubuntu 18.04 VM and take a look at how to use the tool. And this is USB RIP. If you run the tool without any options, you'll get this nice little ASCII art banner you see here. But if you run it again with dash H, you'll notice we have four available arguments, including banner, events, storage, and IDs. You can go ahead and ignore banner because all it does is show you that ASCII banner but events, storage, and IDs warrant further exploration. Let's go ahead and start with events. So I'll run USB RIP events-h, and now we have four available arguments at this level, including history, open, gen auth, and violations. Let's start with history, which will show us the USB device event history on this particular machine. This is really the main purpose of the tool and the option that I use most frequently. So let's hit the up arrow and change the dash H to history. And the first thing we're asked for is our output format. We can accept the default of terminal standard output, meaning it will be displayed to the screen, or we can write it to a JSON file. I'll press enter here and accept the default. And as you can see, we get this really nicely formatted table of our USB device history events. Across the top, we have a connected timestamp, user, vid, PID, product, manufacturer, serial number, the port to which the device was connected, and a disconnected timestamp. So really the same kinds of information we're used to seeing when we run USB device forensics tools against a Windows box. The vid and the PID still work the same and still have the same applicability. And by the way, if you're not familiar with what that is, click the card above to watch an introduction to Windows forensics episode in which we cover those topics. So again, very useful information. By the way, the dashes you see on the output there for 819 and 820 serve as day separators. So it's easy to see when one day's activity ends and the other begins. Let's use the dash L option. And this time you'll notice we get a different output format, which is more of a list format. I personally don't like this as well, but this will also be the default output format if your terminal window is too small for it to draw that table just as an FYI, so you do have some flexibility here. Okay, so what about our other option, which allows us to write it to a JSON file? Let's see what that looks like. So we'll go ahead and repeat the same thing, and this time we'll choose two, and we'll accept the default file name, which is, as you can see here, history.json. So I'll press enter, and now we've successfully written that same data to history.json. So what's the purpose of that? Well, the cool thing is we can use that second option we saw within the events help called open, and we can specify history.json. And there you go. There's the same data that we saw on screen earlier, which we can recall at any point in the future. So this is really neat to be able to save that off and then later be able to generate the same forensic data in this nice table format. So that's one reason you may want to write the data to that JSON file. So let's go ahead and move along and take a look at our next option. We've covered the first two. 
So if we run a dash H, now we have gen auth. So let's see what that's all about. So let's again hit the up arrow and change this to gen underscore auth. And then we're going to need an output file name, which can be anything you like. In this case, auth2.json. What we're doing here is creating an authorized device list or whitelist if you prefer. We're telling USB RIP that anything we've seen up to this point is okay and trusted. And we're writing that data to a JSON file. You'll notice that I did this previously in a file called auth.json. And in between the creation of that file and now, I've inserted what I'll call a rogue USB flash drive. So let's use our final option under the events section, and that's called violations. So I'm going to type USB RIP events violations, and then I'm going to specify that previously written off, not off to, dot JSON. And I'll choose, of course, the standard output to display it to the screen. What we have here is a table showing us only the rogue devices, the devices that were not part of that whitelist. So in this case, in a real example, real life, I would want to investigate this flash drive further because this was not an authorized device to be used on this machine. So pretty neat whitelisting functionality built in by using the gen auth and violations options under our events category. So now let's go ahead and move on and take a look at our next category which is going to be storage. We're not actually going to demo the storage feature here because I installed USB RIP with pip, which is commonly done. If I had instead used the included install.sh script, we would then have access to something called the storage module. This allows you to create cron tab jobs to back up the USB device events on a given computer on some sort of schedule of your choosing. This would enable you to profile USB device history on some sort of set schedule, which is pretty neat. You could even maybe ship that information off to a SIM or use it really in any way you see fit. All of the information you need to get started with this feature is on the GitHub project page we previously looked at. And of course, I'll include a link in the description below. So now let's move on to our final feature, which is called IDs. So this last option is pretty straightforward. Remember the vids and pids we talked about earlier and that we saw in the events history table? Well, this allows us to search for a vid and or a pid within a database. And we can even optionally download that database so that we can perform offline searches at a later date. So let's go ahead and use a real vid and pid so that we can demo this feature. We'll type in search and look at our help options here. And as you can see, it's dash dash vid, dash dash pid, and dash dash offline. We won't be using the offline feature, but we will specify the vid of 0781 and the PID of 5591. And when we execute this, you'll notice it comes back and says this is a SanDisk product and it is an ultra flare drive, which indeed that does match what this vid and PID is supposed to be. So it's just kind of neat to be able to gain a little bit more information about the make and model of a given flash drive that may show up within our history list. And this provides a neat way to be able to quickly search for it. Of course, there are easy ways to find this online too. You can Google a vid PID lookup and easily query the data that way. But this is a nice feature that's automatically built into the tool. And that pretty much wraps up USB RIP. Again, a very easy to use tool. And the first tool that we've covered that's specific to Linux forensics. So as always, I hope you have enjoyed this episode and I hope you found it informative. I look forward to plenty more covering Linux and Mac OS forensics. As always, thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing and I will catch you in the next episode.